All right, layer cake turn six. Uh, I can't think of any. Oh, nice. Excellent. Ryotaro, the son of the Dragon King. Uh, Ryotaro is a Jomanese national hero, and he's not bad. He's not magically special, but the cool thing about him is he starts with some magic equipment, and he has both amphibious and gift of water breathing. He can go underwater. We finished alteration level two. We finished construction level one. Battle in the Stone Grave Mountains. So we're going to charge. They do have a couple of crossbows in the back. Shouldn't be enough to do very serious damage. And you can see my Akaoni Samurai just chop through independent heavy infantry when they collide. Um, I mean, those stats though. 16 attack, 19 damage, 13 defense skill. They're pretty beefy. And they actually have 11 hit points natively, which is more than most humans. So we lost one Ashigaru and one Yamabushi. That's fine. And in the Sea of Rond, uh, happy Weeaboo Meme Lord, down here about to go bite on some fools, this is 26 protection. Yeah, they shouldn't really be able to hurt him. See, they did a little, they're doing a little chip damage with every hit, but little chip damage is not going to bring him down in any particular hurry. Like, they're hurting him. They're hurting him more than anybody else has so far. But, since he on average kills the people he bites, their Berserk doesn't really matter. They did quite a bit of damage. They did, like, 60 or 70 points of damage. But it wasn't enough. Okay, good. So, 699 gold. We're going to recruit a Triton Commander here. Here. So, Ryutaro... He has Gift of Water Breathing 40 size points, which means he can take 20 guys with him. And he has the Spear of the Dragon King, which is magic. It's a piercing weapon. So, slashing weapons take an extra penalty underwater related to their length. Piercing weapons don't. I've got 9 units. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18... 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. So that will recruit exactly enough units for Ryutaro to take underwater. He can... I can't forge anything but trinkets right now. And I don't need any of the trinkets that Ryutaro can forge. Oh, boots of water walking. That's kind of cool. We will just have him research for the moment. Here, I've got Mr. Makoto. He is going to start building a palisades. Woladar will move down here to take that over from him. Uh, Yukimasa, good. Yukimasa has air, earth, and nature, so Yukimasa can summon uh, Tengu. Not yet. Really? Not yet? Conjuration. Yeah, I haven't hit any conjuration yet. We're going to hit construction level 2, which will take two turns. And then we'll jump up to Conjuration, and we'll run down Conjuration to level 3. Uh, but Nature Air can summon Karasu Tengu, which come 3 for 3 gems. And Air Earth can summon Kanoha Tengu, which come 5 plus for 5 gems. So anybody who randoms Air 2 can summon 6 of them for 5 gems, which is pretty nice. For right now, though, uh, let me count points real quick. 66 research points, 98 total. So if I move Yukimasa, let's move Yukimasa up here. We're also going to recruit a commander there. And he will get, okay, 52, yeah, so I'll still finish construction in two turns. Great. Oh, that's Mechlin. Shoot. There's Mechlin over there. Two steps away from me. Um, He's gone pretty much full hell scales. Uh, except he took one point of luck. So he's going to have a pretty substantial bless for his Jaguar Warriors. Because Turmoil 3, Sloth 3, Death 3, Cold 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And it's 12. 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42
12 times 40 is 480 points from scales. So yeah, he's taken like a triple or quadruple bless, which is what you expect from Micklin. I'm not surprised by that. It's just unfortunate. Um, let's pop a couple points of province defense everywhere just to guard against random events. In particular down here. Definitely put some down here. Um, yeah, I need to send him a message. I need to talk to Mictlan to figure out if he is in fact trying to rush me. Because if he is, then we have a problem. I have Alteration level 2, which means I have Earth Meld, and I have a couple of mages. Well, I tell a lie. I have a mage who can cast Earth Meld. He also has Encumbrance 10, so he can only cast it twice before he has to, like, sit down and take a break. But uh, that's two times better than nothing, and with only 10 Jaguar Warriors, to be honest, Weaboo Meme Lord could take 10 Jaguar Warriors in Dominion. In fact, he might, he can probably take them outside Dominion as well, because he will have Protection 26 still. And now that we're at Alteration level 2, I can have him cast Stone Skin to buff his Protection by a couple points. And then he could spam Earth Meld. Uh, I can also cast Armor of Achilles, which makes Armor fall off, but even so. So, I've got options. If he does try to rush me, so long as I know it's coming, I can stop it. The issue will be, of course, knowing that it's coming. So, Fuey... Let me think. In many ways, what would be ideal would be... For him to go... I could stake a claim to Kamiya. Yeah. Kamiya at Oak Halls. At the same time, I don't particularly want to be expanding away from Mictlan, now that I know that Mictlan is right here on my borders. I've got to go talk to him before I commit to moves, because... What he has to say kind of determines which way I have to jump. Um, if I have to keep Weeaboo Meme Lord close in order to stop a rush, then that's one thing. If I can expand freely with him, that's another. So give me just a few minutes here. Okay, so Micklin isn't on a line, which means I can't talk to him right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make moves... I'm going to move assuming he's not rushing me. And that's a dangerous assumption, especially considering this is Kajukin, but Kajukin has... Kajukin is fairly open with what he thinks of nations, and he seems convinced that Jomen is more dangerous than it actually is. In particular, I think my possession of an Earth Snake, which he has just seen, might scare him off, because typically if you take an Earth Snake, you take a big fat bless on him. And he might be thinking that's what I've done with Jomen. Uh, little does he know, of course, that Weeaboo Meme Lord is an extremely budget Earth Snake, but, but, I can, uh, it'll be fine, I can work with this. Um, it looks like Raga has recruited a few area archers. Actually, it looks like they may have lost a fight, because this is two area archers, that looks like a retreat. Or possibly they didn't lose a fight, but lost some units. Well, anyway, so... Uh, we're going to put one point of province defense here. Uh, ooh, I can recruit crossbows in this province. Ooh. And they're not the super, super expensive ones either. Um, I've reached the point where I'm more capped by recruitment points than resources here in Jomon, so building a fort in Stonegrave Mountains. I was already planning to do that because it's the closest place I can recruit Shugenjas and Master Shugenjas from, but now I'm doubly planning to do that. Um, it looks like Micklin is probably going to get these mountains, and that's fine. I'll cede them to him without a fight. So I've got this fort down here, so I'm going to try to claim the land pristine and Valkoria, and the land pristine is also a mountain, so I can also recruit 
uh, Shugenja is there. And I'm also going to try to rush over this way. So, um, we have a meme lord. If I can get underwater there, see, the problem is Agartha is over here, and Agartha is also amphibious. So if I wanted to get into that pond, there would be a fight. For right now, Weabu Meme Lord is going to take that more as a show of confidence than anything. And Fuyui will take this province, which I think he can take. That's, um, that might be as many as 40 units, but it's more light infantry than crossbowmen. And light infantry go down hard to my infantry. Uh, next turn, Ryutara will go under here. That will kick my income up, like, really, really high. Then I can also take this province, which is largely worthless, but is also really, really easy to take, and will provide a tiny amount of resources to the Sleepy Wolds. I'm building the Palisade in the Sleepy Wolds. Searching for sites there. Next turn, I'll move another guy to search for sites here, um, because I'll still be able to hit Construction 2 in two turns. Actually, with Ryutaro, I don't need to hit construct. Well... Yes, I do. No, I don't. I can make Ryutaro my prophet. He can't become the prophet yet, but my current my prophet died on turn... What was it? It was turn one, wasn't it? My prophet died on turn one, so next turn... So Ryutaro should be able to go down there, and because he's amphibious... I kind of want a Master Shugenshi to be my prophet, but... Just because that means they can use all the signs. What school are the... They're holy spells, aren't they? Aren't, they aren't in a school. Jomon has their special holy spells that monks can do. Or anyone with... Any Jomonese unit with holy levels can cast them if they also have magic paths. Ooh, baby. Because see... I could skip Construction 2 and go straight to Conjuration right now, which would be a slight but real strategic advantage, because I can make Ryutaro the Prophet, and he's already amphibious. I'm gonna do it. I am gonna do it. I'm gonna skip Construction, we're gonna go straight to Conjuration 3. Uh, Ryutaro will research for one turn, then he'll take his troops and take the Sea of Woe. Uh, in taking the Sea of Woe, so Weeaboo Meme Lord is going to take Kamiya. Then he's going to move down here and help uh, Fuyui take Utenshur. And then he'll move south. So one turn, two turns, three turns, or possibly three turns. That'll be turn, so turn seven, turn eight, turn nine. At this point, we have to start negotiating with Agartha as well. But I think we can do it. So, assuming that I can convince Kajukin not to attack me, which I think, hope, and pray that I can. Uh, I'm not going to send my turn in just yet. It looks like there's probably going to be an extension, and we have 12 hours anyway, so... Uh, yeah. I'm going to hold off. And if necessary, I will request an extension for the sole purpose of negotiating with Kajukin, because this is important. If he attacks me, if he tries to rush me with his Jaguar Warriors, I can stop him. I have Earthmeld. Weeaboo Meme Lord can spam Earthmeld like it's going out of style. Uh, Kinhide can cast Earthmeld a couple of times. If necessary, I can use Earth Gems to let all of my Master Shugenjas cast Earthmeld. And casting Earthmeld will totally screw up his Jaguar Warriors by locking them in place. And when they're locked in place and have no defense, my Akaoni Samurai can carve them up. Um, now, if they are free to move and attack, they would probably beat my Akaoni Samurai to death with contemptuous ease, but I think Earthmeld would even the playing field to a large degree. Uh, on top of that, I can recruit Samurai Archers, and putting some arrows into them as they charge would definitely be worthwhile because they, like my troops, do not have shields, and they also have fairly low protection, much lower than my troops. So, I think I could... he could hurt me, that's for sure, but this party certainly I could defeat without too, too much trouble. And if he sends more parties at me, he's going to suffer from slower expansion and basically he's going to have to live with his hell scales for longer. So that's good. Okay, so if things change, I'll update you. Until then, uh, assume these are my moves unless I change something and we will see each other in turn seven.
All right, layer cake turn seven. Let's see what this holds for us. Um, I did make a non-aggression pact with Mechtelen, fortunately. So, a completed research in Conjuration. Battle in Kamiya. This is Weeaboo Meme Lord going in hard. He's going to cast Stone Skin. It'll make him vulnerable to cold, but it will buff his protection by two points, which is nice. Uh, at the level he's at, a couple more points can often make the difference. Like, that means that his protection is high enough to, on average, not take damage from crossbows as opposed to taking a couple of points of chip damage. So he's going to exist angrily in the direction of these independent infantry for a while. Uh, ooh, he got a chest wound. That ain't great. Um, yeah, unlucky. But that's fine. He has recuperation. He'll heal it over time. And it doesn't stop him from existing angrily in someone's general direction, so... I like how their attack animation is just a, just a tiny little kick. Okay, so we got that. In Oak Halls... See how this one went. This one could have been bad. Uh, this one isn't very bad. There are fewer crossbowmen than I was afraid. So they're just gonna charge in, hack down the infantry with their amazing sharpness katanas. This poor samurai archer, man. He can still use his longbow with only one arm. That is skill right there. And they're running. Good. Oak Halls. I lost three of my Akaoni, which is a little bit painful, but okay. And of course, Weeaboo Meme Lord was cursed. Of course that happens. Um. And uh, Mictlan was attacked by werewolves and lost, so uh, good. Good for them. Okay, that's fine. So, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, I only have $301 in the treasury, which isn't really what I want to see, because I need to build... Well, I need, uh, yeah, I need to build a lab first, so I need 500 gold for that. Um, that also means I can't start my fortress here yet. He's building a palisade. You should move. You should continue fort construction. Why do I only have 301 gold? It's not like these guys are gold expensive. Um, I mean, I did kick up my income by a significant fraction, but still. Uh, they have about 20 mermen, so Ryotaro is going to go underwater here. He can quicken himself. Uh, he does have encumbrance 8, so it does mean he'll fatigue out, but it'll still be helpful. So you guys hold an attack closest. He's going to quicken self and then ice shield. And then attack closest. So he should be able to take this province pretty easily. Um, 445 gold is not quite enough. Let's recruit a regular Shugenja this turn instead of a master Shugenja. Although, do I really want to be building a lab here any well? I do, because it will mean I could start recruiting more Master Shugenjas very, very quickly. So yeah, start building a lab. It'll give me a, a small head start. We're going to keep pushing scouts up this direction. Um, Raga, looks like they have not exploded yet. Masamori, go sit in Raga for a second. Ooh, there's a wind spire here. I get earth income from this province. Nice. Let's put a little bit of defense on these provinces now. That's going to be a level 1 throne, but it will still probably have wizards. Um, I, ugh. I can't afford to build the lab this turn. I can't. I've got, to, I've got to keep recruiting, and my recruitment is fairly cheap, so I don't feel bad about it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and Master Shigenja. We are going to finish... Uh, we're going to hit Conjuration level 2 in two more turns. Uh, can I afford to pull somebody else off? Yes, I can afford to pull Shingen off to go search for sites. I'm not searching for water sites yet. I'm just searching basic level fire, air, earth, and nature, which is fine. Um, two turns to Conjuration level 2. That's fine. <clears throat> Vor Mifadreth, what a name. 
What a man. What a merman. I'm sorry, he's actually a triton. I apologize. I didn't mean to call you a merman. I'm, I know you're sensitive about that, I'm sure. So next turn, I should have the resources to build... Um, at least start building the fort down here. And it's it's just mermen with spears. I should be able to take them. My Akaoni Samurai, they're going to take like minus... It's like minus four or something for being underwater while not being amphibious. And then it's another minus one for every point of length on your slashing weapon. Fortunately, katanas are short. So I think their attack will still be like 10. <clears throat> 9 or 10, and that will be enough. Um, and the Ashigaru should have attack 11 still. Or, well, no, the Ashigaru will have attack like 7. Um, but that should be enough. And then Ryotaro, of course, will be very, very hard for the Mermen to deal with. So long as he stays in line. Um, they're all the same combat speed, so he should pretty much stay in line. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, pull, like, right there. Okay, good. So, he should take the Sea of Woe. That will kick my income up tremendously. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, we have Umim Lord. Being cursed is a huge problem. Increases the chance of getting afflictions. Now, he has recuperation, so he'll be okay. But still, that is extremely frustrating. Um, let's... Bump the province defense up here as well. And Weeaboo Mimor should come down here. Fuyui can uh, just patrol, I guess, for this turn. I have 278 gold left. I could add two crossbows to his army. Let's do that. So this turn I'm going to take one province. Next turn, um, Ryotaro needs to be building a lab down here. Did Ryotaro not become the Prophet? Why didn't he... Oh, right, he can't become the Prophet yet. That's fine. Never mind. I was I was getting ahead of myself. Ryotaro will move down here, take this province. And then next turn, these combined armies will take this province, and hopefully Ryotaro will be able to take one of these. We'll see. I'm also... I've started talking with Arco Cephali, who is over here. I'm gonna... I'm going to try to take the land pristine and forge a a border that involves like him maybe having Valkoria or him ha just having this line here. We'll see how it goes. Um, after discussing with Meklin, I'm not particularly scared of them anymore. We will see what happens there, but I don't think Meklin is going to be a huge, huge problem. Uh, you'll find out why later on, I'm sure. Go to that province, actually. Uh, and Raga? Raga does not seem to have designs on me, at least not immediately. I think they might be going after Patala, who's over here somewhere. Uh, I don't know where their capital is. That's the Chilad Caverns. So, I don't actually know exactly what province Agartha started in. It might be this province, I suppose. It might be this province. It might even be that province? I think it's more likely to be this one. Well, if they did, that's fine by me, because if they started there, then I am... Because that's not Agartha, so... Because we have an Agartha, yeah, Gildarian the Decayed. The Shadow of Death, Master of Terror, God of Dirt. So yeah, that's fine with me. If they started down here, then they're probably actually going this way into this lake and going to end up conflicting with Atlantis, which is... Perfect. That is just fine. It means that I might be able to gobble these up. Uh, man, as I've said, is down here somewhere, so I'll have to sort out that nonsense. And Atlantis, my arch nemesis, is there. Actually, to be honest, Weeaboo Mimor going down here into these Tritons wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. The problem is, outside my dominion, he's going to start racking up afflictions like they're going out of style. But I've got 14 Akaoni there. I'll have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, plus the archers against 40 horse tribe cavalry. Eh, a little rough. Possibly a little rough. 
I'm just really glad I got such a fantastic ocean province right next to me. That's that's really great. This province will be able to do things for me. They'll be able to do work. <clears throat> it kind of depends. If I'm going for the gusto, then I move in here. It's going to be a little while before I can get a lab and temple built down here, but... Um... Oh boy. This is the safe move. This keeps me rolling with very low odds of failure, but Ryotaro can also come up here to take the help take this province. So yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Fortune favors the bold, you know? Uh now, is there anything else you can cast that will help you? You can cast Earth Meld, but mm, nah. Just stone skin and attack, bro. Okay. Yeah, Weabu Meme Lord is going into the White Lake. He will take that. And we will try to start yet another underwater mini empire over here. This is this is me getting greedy. I'm not gonna not even gonna sugarcoat it. This is absolutely me getting greedy. But if it works, if I can pull it off then, oh baby, we are going to be in for a treat. If I can manage to secure three separate lakes with forts in all of them, I mean, I don't want to go too, too hard underwater because I also have to fight on land, but getting a fort here will give me a lot of income. Getting a fort here will give me a reasonable chunk of income. I don't know what these provinces are going to be like, but... If I get into this one, I can recruit underwater independents and such to try and help take these two. And if I take those... Yeah, we'll see. Fighting Middle Age Agartha under... Fighting Late Age Agartha, I'm sorry. Actually, hold up, what am I saying? I'm crazy. M Late Age Agartha isn't an, isn't an amphibious nation. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I just blew my own mind. I've been I've been so worried about Agartha being amphibious because early and middle age Agartha are amphibious, but late age Agartha isn't. I mean, they have undead, sure, but they're all humans. Um it, it, <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they can they can resummon pale ones that are undead, and they have some national undead summons that can go underwater, but they don't have the statues, and they don't have the pale ones at all. So, yeah. What what have I been worried about? Oh my goodness. The only amphibious nations in here are me, Atlantis, and Mictlan. And Mictlan's in trouble, I'll be honest. Um... Atlantis has his own lake to play in down here. He'll probably take all of those and that one, and he may well get these as well. Which is fine. But on this map, I just don't have competition for these provinces. I can just take them. That Oh, that is excellent. I'm so thankful that I remembered that, because I was sounding like an idiot up to this point, I'm sure. So, um, that I think is going to be turn 7. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in turn 8. All right, layer cake turn eight. Let's see what is in store for the nation of Joman. Uh, didn't find any magic sites. That's fine. Uh, Remnants of the Dead Prophet's power have left this world. Uh huh. Okay, so battle in Sea of Woe. We won. Lost four of our Aka Oni samurai, but that's fine. In White Lake, the Earth Serpent won. And then was killed by Patala's Earth Serpent. You have got to be kidding me. Really? He got a chest wound, okay. Fine. So he wins there with stone skin on. And then oh, this is awful. So it's earth serpent versus earth serpent. His earth serpent has four earth. 
Mine has 6 earth, but has a chest wound and a never healing wound. 234 hit points versus 231. So wait, I have more hit points and I have higher protection, but I still lose because of the chest wound, I bet. Yep, I bet that was it. I fatigued out and he started getting critical hits on me. That must be what it was. See, it's going all my way right at the start here. But then we both start getting poisoned. Yeah, and his damage just stacks up a little faster. Oh, and he weakened me so I'm doing less damage, which means I'm not hurting him. Okay, and then it all just started going against me over time. Gotcha. Still, I bet I crippled him at least, but that is awful. Yep. Now I've lost an eye as well. He's down to 133, but... Yeah, now I can't hit him because I've been weakened down so much. So, And then I route... Oh, I routed. Why couldn't... But I didn't get off the field in time. Yeah, I died right there. Shit. And the poison didn't quite kill him. Oh, that is frustrating. That is incredibly frustrating. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We're going to start building rock walls here, and we're going to recruit a guy to take over that. We're already building a palisade over here. We're going to search for magic sites. Up here, we've searched for magic sites. We don't have much money. So we've got one fort, two forts in progress. This one is going to have to wait in the Sea of Rond. If Patala decides to send his Earth Serpent after me, I don't have a good way to stop it, um, frankly, because it is nearly invincible. Now, my Akaoni Samurai can theoretically hurt it a little bit, crossbows can theoretically hurt it a little bit, but I'm just going to put those on repeat recruitment. But it's going to be, like, problematic. That is a Thrice Horned Boar from Man. I don't like any of this one little bit. So I'm going to have a talk with Man. I'm going to have to have a talk with Patala. Um, we're going to send these armies in here to do this. Because that is the only logical way to do this. Uh, you're going to attack closest. There. Excuse me, I'm sneezing with rage. Uh, and you are going to fire at enemy archers. And you... are going to... It's cleared out my order script again. Yeah, do that, okay. So, they're going to combine on these horse tribe cavalry. Um, I think they should be able to take them. Yukimasa up here. Let's recruit... I can't. Let's move Pagobar. No, that's a bad idea because I want him to get troops. Let's move Zanbarth in here and Pagobar up there. That fort has two turns left, so next turn we will build the lab. We'll delay putting the fort in in the Sea of Rond for now. However, we are going to kick defense up to six. And we will also bump defense up there. And I'm actually going to remove one guy so that I can increase the defense further. Great. Uh, samurai archers are 11 gold. We're going to swap over to primarily samurai archers for a turn here to save money. Man is already in the plains. Shoot. Okay, well, we'll see what this is. If these two armies can take it, we will, but I doubt they can. I shouldn't have done that. I got greedy and it bit me. I should have anticipated that Patala's... Earth Serpent would be in here. I knew he was in the area because I knew he'd been there fighting with Raga. I just didn't think he'd gone underwater. And to be honest, that was bad luck. It could have gone either way. 
Uh, it was very, very close. But I just made... I just didn't make the rolls. I didn't make the rolls when I needed them. So, in order to get my god back, I'm going to have to recruit Kanushi and set them to call god. Which is a huge pain, especially because Kanushi are two recruitment points. And they can only be recruited in forts with temples. Um, I may have to build a temple here and start spamming out independent priests. That's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to put up some temples, start spamming out independent priests, which will be a huge pain and a diversion of time and money. But uh, I got to do what I got to do. Um, so I'm going to have to recruit a couple of priests. Ryotaro was going to have to become the prophet. He'll build a temple down here. I don't think I can recruit priests underwater. I don't think there's any such thing as underwater independent priests, but... We will see what's what. I'm going to have to talk to man. Ah, uh, baby. I've got these guys going on. That's fine. That saves me a little bit more money. Let's... Let's get a couple more Aka Onis going. Okay. Oh, I'm pissed off about that. I am... Upset. I'll hit Conjuration level 2 next turn. When I hit Conjuration level 2, I will be able to hopefully start recruiting some uh, Karasu Tengu. I need I need an air random, and I have two air randoms, but they're both they've both moved out at the moment. You can Masa move back here just in case, because I have air gems, so I can start pumping out some Tengu to reinforce my forces. The other thing here is Raga has started attacking Ulm. And Ulm and Bogarus and I have been talking about that, and we've, we've pretty much agreed we need to declare war on Raga in order to stop him from getting too big McLarge huge if he does this. Unfortunately, I can't. Without the Earth Snake, I absolutely can't. I mean, even with the Earth Snake, it would be a hugely risky move for me, but without the Earth Snake, it's just impossible. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight provinces on turn eight, and my expansion is now going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm sorry, I have nine provinces on turn eight, and my expansion is going to be limited, especially if Patala or Man decide to bully me, and bullying Jomen is a time-honored tradition, and I don't have anything that can stop an Awake Pretender now that I've lost my Earth Snake. Shit. This might end the game for me. Uh, I'm gonna be real here. This might legitimately outright end the game. Um, if I don't have... I don't have a way to fix this. I can tangle vines a pig in order to stop it from moving, but... Even outside its own domain, well, outside its own domain, it wouldn't be blessed, but it'll go berserk. And as soon as it goes berserk, its protection is 20, which means that um, Jaguar tribe warriors can't really hurt it. If it berserks and I have it tangle vined, then theoretically, Aka Oni Samurai could kill it. Or Go Hatamoto. Actually, Go Hatamoto would be better. So, just because of the danger here, I'm going to start spamming out Go Hatamoto. They do more damage. They have a small, lower chance to hit, but against a Berserking Pig, chance to hit doesn't matter so much. If they come into my domain, if he comes into my domain with his pig, I have a chance to kill it. It's not a good chance, but I have possible options. Um, I will lose provinces if this pig comes into my, pro comes into my land, but... I will try to kill it. Same thing with this Earth Serpent. This Earth Serpent has no bless whatsoever. It's not very tough. It's not casting any spells. I mean, it's tough, but it's not tough enough to stop me. If I surround it with Go Hatamotos, the Go Hatamotos will eventually hack it down. It will take them a long time. And they only have morale 13, so I'll have to do something to keep their morale up. But it's possible. So I've got options. Um, 
that's going to be the turn, I guess. We will see what happens next time. I am not terribly optimistic at this point. I still can't see, man. This scout actually needs to move south. I got to, I've got to get some vision. And uh, whew, we will see what happens. If I can get this fort up, I'll be in a better place. But in any case, that's the turn. I'll see you in turn nine. All right, so it's turn nine. Uh, neither Patala nor Man responded to me before the turn ticked over. So we'll see what happened. At least I didn't have any uh, unexpected battles. So let's see how Utenshur went. Hopefully well. Uh, Could have gone well. Might have gone well. Let's find out. That's a lot of arrows, though. It surely is a lot of arrows. My guys are taking chip damage. Even regular old arrows do hurt Jomini's infantry sometimes. Once they get into melee, though, they should do significant damage. Yep, they're doing damage, that's for sure. Let's see if it's enough. Okay, they've routed one gang. Yeah, I think, yep, we did it. Okay, great. Good. Uh, took some casualties. Really did. Lost two of our Yamabushi and four Akaoni, but we won. Uh, the big pig has vanished. Excellent. So now you become the prophet. You continue the fort construction. I have 576 gold. I would like to start another fort. Unfortunately, Agartha and Man have cut me out of the farms. I can't stop an army composed mainly of Agartha and light crossbowmen. I just... That just isn't an option. So, um, hmm. Although, let me see here. That's about 60 units. Light crossbowmen and heavy infantry. Uh, that's 40 triton troopers. So clearly Patala's been in here for a little while. Where is Patala's capital? Can I see it yet? I can't. Okay. I don't know how Raga versus Ulm is going. I think that's Ulm right there, though. I think Ulm is, like, right up here. Ooh. Uh, Miklan has taken that province back. Arcosophale has gotten some Hobergs in here. I'd like to start this second underwater fort, but... Actually, I'm going to build this lab first because this fort is going to be done in a turn. And by building a lab, I'll be able to start recruiting mages immediately. Still got my Go Hatamoto coming. I feel like it's a good idea to have some. They're not the most efficient, but I want them. And I can now summon Karasu Tengu with Yukimasa. He's the only one I can do that with so far, but I can do it with him. So, I'm going to start summoning some Karasu Tengu. That will cost some of my gems here. We're going to head up to Conjuration level 3. After that, we're going to have to kind of reassess. May need some construction. May need some of something else. Um, if I was willing to... Okay, so... This is going to take four turns to get the fortress, and then I'll have to upgrade it. So it's not going to be ready until turn 13 at best. This fort is going to be active next turn. What I could do... I've got 16 infantry here. I've got 12... 14 infantry here, plus 7 archers. Overall, about 30 units. Um... Oh, gosh. That's free of enemy military units. I could try to take Karyon. But I just need to talk to Agartha. Um, or I could take this cave, Underspring. Woof, this is a hard one. I'm not sure what I should do here. If I go in here with both armies, I have a chance of winning... Um, now my chance of winning would be largely dependent on getting either getting to the back and tying his crossbows up and killing them, which would take a long time and I would take a lot of casualties doing it, or killing his Drake Lord if his Drake Lord is unscripted. 
Overall, I think it's too risky. I think Ryotaro is just going to stay down here, become the prophet, build the temple and the lab, and we will proceed from there. Uh, Pagobar, am I recruiting anything in Stone Mountains? No? Okay. I haven't gotten any of my mercenaries either, which is fine. Oh, that's where he got them, the swimming men. That's what that is. It's a mercenary troop. Okay, that's fine. You just keep doing that. I'm going to kick the defense up here to 6 because this is a crossbow province. Actually, I'll tell you what. Pagobar is going to move up there because that's a crossbow province with good recruitment points and good resources. And I want crossbows badly. Independent crossbows, please. It still won't have a huge number of resources. And it has a magic site. So yeah, Fortress and Kamiya, stat. Uh, Zanbarth. Got ten of those guys. Is ten enough? If I move him down here, ten of them plus forty... Yeah, I think they can take that province, probably. And I've got to move. I've got to make progress. So push Zanbarth down here. We'll go take the land pristine in order to get more resources and such for Sleepy Wolves, and of course more income, because I do desperately need income. Underspring would be risky. That province would be risky as well. Now, I could grab six crossbows and go in here. It's mainly militia archers and light infantry. It is, however, a swamp. Going here, it's just ten zots, and zots are quite weak. Let's send Makoto in there. Let's send Fuyui up here to grab the crossbows. Zanbarth. Zanbarth, go down here. Join these guys. You're building the palisade. Has one month to go. Nope, nope. Build that palisade. Um, I'm recruiting more independent commanders here, which is fine. Okay, things are still going all right. Not great, but all right. If I take this province, I shouldn't take many, if any, casualties doing it. It's risky because I don't know which way Agartha is going to jump. I need to talk to him. So I'm going to end this recording here. Uh, poor Vor Mifedreth still has not fulfilled his purpose in life. His only purpose in life. But he'll, it'll be all right. I am going to drop some province defense in here. It's horse tribe cavalry, which ain't terrible, but also aren't great. At least they're not very resource intense. If I wanted to, I could build a fort here as well. Um, I would worry that I'd be sucking too many resources away from Jomon, is the thing. I've got one turn of those guys. How many um, Akaoni can I get? No, they're more gold and less resources. Let's pump out some Samurai Archers real quick. Yeah, I think that's probably the play at the moment. Like that. Yeah, let's do that for now. Pump out some Samurai Archers. Keep going with the Master Shugenjas. Uh, Research-wise... Gonna hit Conjuration level 3 in about 3 turns. I'm not too worried about it. You're building a lab. You are summoning Karasu Tengu. Can't bless him, but um, it's still good to have him. Let's move you out to start finding magic sites. That will cut my research down, but not enough to stop me from getting it in 3 turns anyway. So turn 12, I will have Conjuration level 3 which will let me summon Earth Power, which is a critical part of my plans, and summon Lesser Earth Elementals and Air Elementals and even Fire Elementals, and it will also give me Kanoha Tengu. So Conjuration Level 3, definitely a very, very important early game goal. This guy's going to go up here to build that fort. I may actually build that fort before this fort, because this fort... It's going to take some time because Ryotaro need to, needs to build the lab and the temple down here, then move over, which will take him more time. So, um, it, there's no real rush to get this fort going. All it can do without a lab and a temple is build shark warriors. Raga 
is definitely expanding, but not consistently and not as fast as I was afraid. I mean, I think I have almost as many provinces as Raga does right now, which is a little bit silly to say as Joman comparing myself to Raga, but I'm going to end this recording now for the moment. May come back to it. May well come back to it to change what I'm doing depending on where Agartha is going, but we'll see. I'll, I'll uh, see you... If I don't come back to it, then I'll see you in turn 10. Alright, so Agartha's not online. Um... So I can't. I haven't been able to talk to him yet. I've already got my agreement with Arquocephala. I've already got a non-aggression pact with Mictlan. That's all doing fine. Uh, Man has agreed not to attack me so long as I'm dealing with Raga. So I haven't told him that technically right now I have a non-aggression pact with Raga. Um, I'm gonna have to break it because I really do have to fight Raga. Um, I cannot. Raga cannot be allowed to just eat Ulm and keep rolling because he will become a metastasizing tumor very, 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 very quickly. I don't really have the tools right now to fight him effectively, and I won't for a little bit. Um, Earth Melt helps. Armor of Achilles helps. Numbness would help. But I... Oh boy... Early game, Joman just does not have the oomph to stop Zayedans. I would basically have to get really lucky. If I get really, if I get, if I hit him with Armor of Achilles, Earth Meld, Earth Meld doesn't hurt Zayedans because they're flying. Um, if I hit him with Armor of Achilles, Go Hatamotos can cut Zayedans down. The problem is when they turn back into Griffin form, I believe their armor magically reappears. So that's a situation, but. Basically, I'm using Raga as a a diplomatic stick in order to convince people to leave me alone while I expand, solidify my position a little bit, and then go fight Raga, which I have to do. There isn't another option. Uh, it's a bad situation, but gotta make the best of it. So, uh, we're gonna carry out the plan as stated. I'm gonna send in my turn because I have to send in moves, or I may not send it in just yet, I may hold off until I can talk to Agartha, but I'll send it in tomorrow. Um, yeah, but it's gonna be a good old time. Get a couple more scouts in Ragan territory because I only have the one. It looks like Raga has been pushing way over here to reach out and touch Mictlan. Uh, by the way, I'm sure this isn't a secret at this point, so I'm not breaking any trusts by saying this. Mictlan messed up. Um, I alluded to that earlier, but Mictlan took, as you can see here, Mictlan took Hell Scales in order to get an enormous bless on his sacred units. Unfortunately, at least what he's told me, of course this could be a ploy, but what he's told me and what I think is true based on his behavior in other channels is he accidentally uploaded the wrong god. Specifically, he uploaded an imprisoned chassis that he hadn't spent the bless points on. Which is... Whew, that is a problem for Mictlan. So, he's going to have to kind of deal with that situation. I'm not worried about him because blessless jaguar warriors are absolutely something that Go Hatamoto and Akaoni Samurai can handle. They still have a lot of attacks, but their damage is relatively low, and their stats, their defense stats particularly, are relatively low. So my infantry and my archers can handle Jaguar Warriors if they don't have a crazy blessing on them. That will be fine. So we're going to carry out the plan as stated, um, and we'll see what happens. Can I rename Ryotaro? I can rename him. If I rename him, if I rename him something innocuous, then people might not realize that I've made a national hero my prophet. But they have to assume that I would make somebody amphibious my prophet anyway, so either I'm forging a ring or I'm just making, I don't know, bit of a mess. But in any case, we're doing all right. Honestly, it's turn nine. I have 10 provinces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, I have 10 provinces, about to have 11, uh, unless something goes 
horribly wrong, which it shouldn't. I'm feeling okay about this, to be honest. Uh, not feeling bad. So that is Agartha right there. Fine. So hopefully he and Patala will fight over this lake. Well, no. Never mind. I keep forgetting. Late Age Agartha is not amphibious. Late Age Agartha is not amphibious. Get it into your head, man. I'm going to end up fighting Patala over this lake at some point. But for right now, I'm going to go in on Raga. I'm going to try to enlist Patala's help. I've already got Bogorus and Ulm, of course. Ulm is already fighting Raga. And if Bogorus and Patala and I all go in against Raga, I might be able to enlist Mictlan too, possibly. We'll see. He won't be very effective without a Bless, but he's better than nothing. And we should, if we get three or four people all ganging up on him, we should be able to tear Raga down. It'll be messy and hard, but hopefully by the end of year one, so in about 15 turns, we'll have Raga badly damaged and contained, if not actually dead. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in turn 10. Alright, it's Lair Cake turn 10. Uh, a lot of diplomacy has happened since the last episode. Um, couple of different interesting things. Uh, Raga, we've the, the coalition against Raga has fully formed. Uh, I still have a non-aggression pact with Raga, but I am moving towards the point where I will cancel that pact and move against them. Battle in Endron. Ulm attacked Raga and won. Right, this is what's happening. Ulm and Raga are fighting at the moment. Battle in Karyon, which I won. Uh, I talked to Agartha agreed I would take Karyon and he would take the cave. Uh, brigands attacked the Stonegrave Mountains and took it over. Shit. But at least I finished my Palisades, so that's awful, and I hate it, and I wish it had never, ever happened. But it is what it is. Uh, as a consequence, I've now lost uh, a lot of resources. So, it is time to go back to Akaoni. Okay. So yeah, Agartha's right there. I'm right here. This guy is going to get those crossbows. Um, I need to move Ryutaro back underwater. He is going to give all his troops to Makoto here, which will give Makoto a reasonable army. Unfortunately, I'm now expansion blocked in this region which is a problem. Uh, let's give these guys as many troopers as they can have. These guys are going to be up front. We're going to have those guys flanking and these guys flanking. And we are just going to, like, Zerg rush forward. I need, however, to begin recruiting more wizards. And I do have decent resources here, so we're going to... But I don't have his recruitment points, because I only have 97 of those. So, this is going to be a Samurai Archer recruitment point. Because they require fewer recruitment points. It's a recruitment point for things that don't require many recruitment points. I could spam out just a lot of Ashigaru. I could do that. One, two, three, four. Uh... Yeah, so I'm rec point limited even on Ashigaru. But the problem is Ashigaru are terrible. Like, stat-wise, they're just not impressive. They don't have shields. Yari are long, but with that low attack skill, they don't repel much, so it's hardly worth it. So yeah, it's just going to be samurai archers from here. Um, Shingen. You are actually going to be the one who has to upgrade... Ah, I hate to do that. I really hate to do that. That's heavy infantry and heavy cavalry. Heavy cavalry are going to be a huge pain to deal with. But Go Hatamoto can kill heavy cavalry but they're going to attack cavalry. These guys are just going to have to kind of attack whatever is nearby. So we've got 24 of each. Yeah, the Gohatamoto will need to hunt down the heavy cavalry. They have the damage output to do it. With their 21 damage, they can cut through heavy cav protection. So, these two are going to go in. This guy's going to move down here, take over the fortress after one turn. Actually, just move... So you can go searching for magic sites. You also search for magic sites. I have 40 villains up there. 17 samurai archers can actually take on 40 villains. Can Makoto reach there in one turn? No. 
but I also can't expand, so it doesn't really matter. Six there, six there, six there. Already got six there, let's make it six here. Uh, having six defense is what fends off that event. Um, yeah, protection 18, my 21 damage, Go Hatamoto's can cut through that. Um, yeah. In order to call my god back, I'm going to need to start recruiting priests. Which I really don't want to do. Um, I really just want to build a random temple somewhere. But in order to get that, I have to recruit a priest first. So I'm going to recruit a Monk of the Fivefold Path. It's a little cheaper, at least. Um, I'm already building a rock walls down there, and they will be done in three turns. So one, build the lab, build the temple, they'll be done just in time. I have 453 gold right now, which means if I cancel him, if I don't start recruiting him yet, which only costs me one turn, I could afford to start the rock walls in the Sea of Rond as well. So let's do that. Yeah. Then next turn, I'll start the fort here. I'll, I'll, up, I'll start upgrading the fortress here, and I will build the... I'll, I'll build either the lab or the temple, whichever is easiest, down here. Okay. Progress is being made. We're making it happen. Uh, probably Turmoil 3 was too much. I am running into recruitment point limits now. But, well, to be honest, my recruitment points and my resources are neck and neck. So, actually, I feel like this is just right. Because production and turmoil balance each other out since Jomun's troops are so resource heavy. So, Makoto. Uh, it is cold and snowy, so I can't move across all of this at the moment. Makoto go up there. Ryutaro is going back underwater. Uh, you have crossbows coming. So, I will take my crossbows and these troops, Makoto's troops. From here, you can either attack Stonegrave Mountains to reclaim it, or you can attack Rotmarsh if Agartha hasn't. But Agartha will probably take Rotmarsh, to be fully honest. Um, I also definitely want, as I said, a fort in this province. Because this province has high recruitment points, decent resources, although not fantastic, and access to relatively low resource crossbows. So definitely want those. Definitely want those. They are the same crossbows as here, but I can recruit more of them in that province. So that's where I'm going to build the fort. <sighs> yeah, building this fort stole a ton of resources from Joman, but overall it still increased my recruitment cap capacities. And I'm going to build another fort here in the Stonegrave Mountains, and it will once again steal a ton of resources from Joman, but it will increase my recruitment capacity. Um, Joman is just going to have to be stuck with this for now, it's already out of recruitment points when it's doing that, so that'll be fine. Sucking resources out of neither of these provinces are being triple dipped, so they'll be okay. Uh, my administration is 45, 15, and it'll be 15. This will upgrade to 30 once I upgrade the fort. And of course, rock walls do not draw resources. So it's turn 10. This rock wall, turn 11, turn 12, um... Spring of next year, this rock wall will be active, and this will be an upgraded fort. This will be done five months, uh, winter, late. It'll be done in early summer, and then I'll upgrade it. So yeah, we'll be in a pretty good place. By year, by the middle of year one, I'll have four forts, which is a decent place to be. This army, I think, can take this province, the land pristine which will kick my income up. Uh, taking the Stonegrave Mountains will kick my income up. My problem is, here's my real problem. It's turn 10. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Count that as 12. I have 12 provinces. Uh, that's not good expansion. It's not. Arcosophale was over here. 
Arcosophali has at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Arcosophali has at least 13. They've probably also expanded over here. Now, to be fair to myself, I was a little handicapped by losing my god. That cost me at least two provinces. Because I would have taken that one and then I pro pro probably would have also taken this. <sighs> yeah, I would be in much, much better shape if that had not happened and I am super salty about it. Uh, the last thing I need when I'm already playing Joman is for that to happen to me. But it's fine. It'll be okay. Uh, I'm still summoning Karasu Tengu. Karasu Tengu are honestly, they kind of follow the same trajectory as most Jomanese units. They have really good stats, except they're garbage levels of fragile. Um, like, the katana attack is incredible. The lightning strike is pretty dang good. Eight, I mean, it's, it's not like Storm Demon lightning strike. It does less damage. But it's still a shock attack that does armor negating damage with small area shock. It's pretty freaking good. Um, Karasu Tengu are fantastic summons. The problem is protection four. Uh, that really is a serious problem. Now, once you get up to alteration five, you can cast Wooden Warriors on Karasu Tengu, and Wooden Warriors goes a long way towards making them better because it kicks their protection up to a reasonable level. Um, well, Protection 14, which is still not high. They still get killed with Protection 14 fairly easily, but at least it's something. Once you go up even higher in Alteration to Marble Warriors, so we get Wooden Warriors at level 5. At level 7, we get Marble Warriors, which costs a gem, but has a much larger area of effect and gives them Natural Protection 15. That makes them really tough. That makes them, like tough enough to be really, really solid, but you don't get it until Alteration 7. The same level at which you get Mass Protection. And then, of course, at level 9, you get Army of Gold and Army of Lead. But you can see Alteration really is the school that Joman needs to research, um, because you need to get those Earth buffs, you need to get Maws of the Earth and Wooden Warriors, you need to get Swarm. Swarm is a fantastic nature spell, and Everybody, literally every single one of your Master Shugenjos can cast Swarm. You can win battles as Joman just by going onto the field with 8 or 10 Master Shugenjos and having them all just cast Swarm as hard as they can for as long as they can. That can do the trick. Um, but you need Alteration for all of that. So it's unfortunate because Joman also needs Conjuration really, really badly because they need those National Summons. I need Kanoha Tengu right now. Kanoa Tengu aren't as good as Karasu Tengu, but you get more of them. They come faster, and so that's important. I need air elementals. I need earth power. God, do I need earth power. Um, so I have to hit Conjuration level 3. After Conjuration level 3, I'm probably... Probably going back to Alteration up to level 5, and then I'll come back to Conjuration to go up to level 5. At some point, I'm going to need to sneak in Construction up to level 3 or 4. But it has to come after Conjuration level 3, which will be two more turns. So, um, I hate this event and want it to die. It's kind of my own fault, because I didn't put enough defense in the province, but... Shut up. Doesn't matter. Um, the troops that I get here would be able to do it. I just don't have a commander for them. I'm considering... Yeah, I need to recruit the monk. I've got to. And Kanushi, even Kanushi, take two recruitment points. They're just priests. They have a 10% magic random. But having any chance of having any magic automatically makes you two recruitment points. It really kind of sucks. Um... Or I could get two Hatamotos. Which could also be useful. Why do you have eight map move right now? Oh, right. Because Yamabu because all of Joman's units have terrible crappy map move. 
Um, yeah, but I do need those troops to be moving, so that's fine. Next turn, I'll be able to retake Stonegrave Mountains. Then, it will be a matter of who do I fight. Because at that point, I will have to fight somebody. And the answer is probably Raga. Um, although, interestingly, Raga right now has snow on it. And you don't get snow when you have a heat scale. So... Can he not recruit Zidaeans in the winter? Did he not take Heat 3? I was sure he would take Heat 3. That's very interesting. That's extremely interesting. Before I went to fight Raga, I wanted to have Alteration Level 4 and Ryujin. And the, re the reason is... I can speak words. At Alteration Level 4... You get a spell called Wolven Winter, which has a range of five provinces, and it drops the temperature, the, the heat-cold scales in a given province, by, I believe, three scales. It only costs five water gems. Now, I don't have any water gem income, because I haven't found any yet, and I haven't sent out any water random Master Shigen just to search, which I should absolutely do. Um, Hitakazu, yeah, go down there. Try searching for water sites, please. Um... But I can I can get a hold of five water gems by alchemy, if nothing else. And by doing that, I could lock down his capital so that he could never produce Zayedans again. Once I start casting Wolven Winter, so long as I cast Wolven Winter every turn or two, um, his capital will be constantly at at least cold one. And so, since Zayedans are heat recruit, he will never be able to recruit them. Until, unless he starts casting a spell called... I think it's also also an alteration. Is it not? There's a spell called Breath of the Desert. And it's a fire air cross path spell. There it is, it's in evocation. And it's the opposite of um Wolven Winter. It it bumps heat up. So Raga can't naturally cast this, I don't believe. Uh, one of their their area mages, yeah, the Zautar has fire and air, can random another point of fire. And so with fire 2 and air 1, all he needs to do in order to be able to cast it is get a Daster to forge a skill of fire, which is construction 6, and then give it to a Zautar and that Zautar will be able to cast Breath of the Desert. Now, he needs fairly high-level research in order to do that. So if I start casting Wolven Winter on him, it will take quite a while before he can even potentially uncast it. And in that time, I hope to have him dead, basically. Um, it looks like his expansion has been somewhat uneven, which is nice. But uh, in any case, gem income... Crappy, but it's the early game yet. I haven't started sight searching, so that's fine. We're going to take this province. That will give us our 12. Then we're going to have to fight somebody. To be honest, the easiest target would be Mictlan. I also happen to know that Mictlan, or strongly, strongly suspect that Mictlan has been sort of trying to curry favor with Raga by telling him about the... talking to him about the coalition that's forming against him which I don't really care about, I knew already, but it makes me like the Mictlan player a little bit less, and I think it makes it a little more likely that I'll go after him. Um, I have non-aggression packs with both Raga and Mictlan. I don't have formal non-aggression packs with Man and Agartha. I do with Arcosophale. Man has told me he'll leave me alone so long as I'm fighting Raga, and which, okay, fair. And Agartha I've had a little bit of communication with, but not much. We might might be going to war. It's always possible. Um, Agartha and Light Crossbowmen are the worst. If I thought I was going to war with Agartha immediately, I would be recruiting Samurai Cavalry, despite the fact that Samurai Cavalry are not good units. And the reason I would be doing that is because they are extremely fast. Combat Speed 24 is pretty good. 
Um, I could only get four of them a turn. But I could use them as flanking squadrons to try and lock down his cavalry. To be honest, to be honest, what Joman uses and should use in that role is Tengu. Uh, Tengu, in the role of locking down and killing ranged units, can perform pretty well. Uh, you just basically just have them on attack rear. And they just fly up immediately, land on the archers, lock the archers down, usually die, which is really, really sad because they cost gems. But it is what it is. Um, with my hard skin bless, I can boost them up to protection 9, which is better than 4, albeit not great still. Um... That doesn't play very nice with bark skin. I mean, once I get bark skin, I'll be using bark skin instead. But for now, for now, that is the problem. Is just that recruiting priests to bless them is a huge pain in the butt. But in any case, um, this is what I'm doing for this turn. Turn eleven, I should have the land pristine, which will be great. Turn 12, I'll have Stonegrave Mountains back. And hopefully, I'll also be building a whole lot more. Like, this is honestly quite a few forts to have under construction year one. Three forts in the first year, year zero, sorry. Three forts in year zero is perfectly respectable. If I can get a fort started here as well, that will be really cool. Uh, and being able to pump out crossbows and independent heavy infantry here would also be really cool because independent heavy infantry are better chaff than any of Joman's national units. They're not better at doing damage, but they're better chaff. They have protection 16, they have 12 defense skill, which is decent, and they have a shield, which lets them parry arrows. So, and they're not actually any slower. Like, compare. Samurai, which cost exactly the same, have one point less protection, one point less defense skill, same combat speed, fewer hit points. What they do have is they have a higher attack and more damage on an attack on a melee attack that also does piercing damage. So they have two points more attack and two points more damage. That's I mean that's a trade-off, that's fine, I can understand it, but overall it makes them less useful than independent heavy infantry because independent heavy infantry is better at soaking up damage and especially after the mid game hits soaking up damage is what you want your infantry to do your infantry are not the killing power of your army that is your mages so having infantry that is monomaniacally designed to be killing power is uh, uh, it's not the best like i don't recruit samurai because they're worse than independent heavy infantry. If I'm recruiting Jomanese infantry, I'm recruiting Akaoni samurai, because they are better than independent heavy infantry just by virtue of having very, very good stats. And which means they hit very hard and they hit almost all the time. So it's worth the premium. Go Hatamoto, I sometimes recruit for the same reason, except they do a lot more damage. Um, and that's the reason to want them over anything else. It's not piercing, which is... Yeah, actually... I have to consider it's not... Well, only half of the Akaoni's hits are pierced because they randomly choose between these two. Anyway, I'm not doing a whole bunch of math right now. Um, we've got things underway, such as they are. It, Mictlan is having just a terrible, terrible time, which I approve of. I like it. I want them to have more of a terrible time. Probably, to be honest, what's going to happen is I'm going to cancel my non-aggression pact with Mictlan. I'm going to contact Arcosophale, and the two of us are going to destroy Mictlan. Because Mictlan is super, super vulnerable right now. And, of course, Raga will be Raga, and we will deal with Raga. And, to be honest, hopefully, Ohm and Bogorus can basically take out Raga while taking a whole bunch of damage. I mean, I don't know. I want in on that, just because, if for no other reason than because I'm actually the closest to Raga's capital, and if I could manage to take Raga's capital, that would be huge. 
Now taking a capital in the early game is a huge pain in the butt, so probably not going to happen, but we will see what we can do. Going to see if I can make sure that Atlantis, that I'm sorry, that Agartha won't jump on me, and then we're going to be moving north. Uh, taking these provinces will be a huge help. Putting a fort in the impassable mountains would not be bad. 50% recruitment point bonus would kick it up to about 100, so like the Sleepy Wolds. And if I upgraded it to a fortress, yeah, that would be workable here. Has a lot of resources. Okay, that's the tentative plan. We're researching towards Alteration 4 so we can keep Raga locked down and prevent them from recruiting griffins. We are... Oh no, no, I know what it is. They do have a heat domain. The reason why this shows snow is just because I don't have eyes on it. I can't see it. And since it's winter, the game assumes that anywhere that you can't see must be snowy. Yeah, that's what it is. So never mind, although this province I technically don't have eyes on, but I can still see the... I can't see the scales. I don't have Dominion next to it. Well, whatever. I need to build more temples as well because since I lost my god, my dominion spread chances were cut in more th worse than in half. So I need, I'm need, i going to need to start recruiting monks of the Fivefold Path, get them out there, build some temples. It, it has to happen. I don't have a choice. Um, it's going to cut into my free money, and that's going to have to be okay. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next turn. Turn 11. And we will find out what's to find out. That will be in the next video. I'm going to cut this video here at turn 10, I think. If you like what I do, uh, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like on the video, all that good stuff. Uh, also consider checking out the Patreon if you enjoy my videos and want to support me. And uh, whether you do or not, I will see you in the next video.